here we have an elliptical path where the object's actually moving clockwise, and it tells us a starting point of 0, 3, and it tells us after pi over 2 seconds it's at 7, 0. So here's the key with clockwise versus counterclockwise. The function cosine t is going to start at 1, and then it's going to approach 0. Because cosine of pi over two, uh, cosine of zero is one, and cosine of pi over two is zero, right? So cosine is going from one to zero, while sine is going from zero to one. Okay. So then, if we multiply cosine and sine by our coefficients, that's how we're going to get our 3 and our 7, and we're just trying to figure out how to order everything. So think about our y value, right? Our, y va or our x value is starting at, z at 0, at time 0, and our y value is starting up at, uh, at our value of 3. So when we think about what's x and what's y, well, sine starts at 0, and we need our x value to start at 0. So our x value must be sine with some coefficient, all right? So uh, similarly, at pi over 2, at time pi over 2, our y value is 0. And which of these is 0 at pi over 2? Well, cosine is 0 at pi over 2. So our y value must be cosine. All right, so let's think about our y value. Our y value is cosine. At time 0, cosine would normally be 1, but right now it's 3, so that's going to put our 3 out front here. And then, again, with sine, at uh, normally at pi over 2, sine would be equal to 1, so our x value would be equal to 1, but it's actually equal to 7, so that's going to throw a 7 out front here. So there's our parameterization. x is 7 sine t, y is 3 cosine t. In general, if sine is the x value and cosine is the y value, we're always going to be moving clockwise. And if cosine is the x value, sine is the y value, we're going to be moving counterclockwise because of how cosine and sine behave as our input becomes larger. And then our coefficients are going to affect our semi-major and our semi-minor axis of our, our elliptical path.